Team Group Dark Z Alpha is a high-performance DDR4 memory that features an armored aluminum heatsink design, comes with an overclocking profile, and is compatible with AMD's latest Ryzen processors. To learn more, check out the link in the video description. Hey, what's going on guys? Today we're going to have a look at what is probably the best bang for the buck CPU at the moment, though it is also most likely out of stock everywhere, the Ryzen 5 1600 AF. So I've built a Ryzen 5 1400 based system for my friend a couple of years ago, which he decided to upgrade recently with the 1600 AF that he got for $90. For those of you who don't know, the 1600 AF is essentially a rebranded Ryzen 5 2600, but cheaper. It only has the clock speeds of the original 1600, but other than that, it's basically a Zen Plus CPU. I've been playing with the 1600 AF for quite some time now, and I must say I got so impressed by the performance that I actually decided to get one myself. I already got the motherboard as well as the RAM, big thanks to Team Group for sending in the memory by the way. The CPU should also arrive very soon and I just can't wait to compare it to my FX8350 that I've been using since 2013. So if you'd like to see the comparison, be sure to subscribe and don't forget to turn on the notifications. Okay, so what we're going to do right now is jump straight into benchmarks, after which I'll show you the specs, and we will also go through some of the parts that I picked and left in the description, in case you'd like to build yourself a 1600 AF based system. Alright, let's begin with Cinebench R15, and I'm going to be honest with you, this is the highest score I've ever got in Cinebench. With a 4GHz overclock, we're getting 167 points for the single core and 1378 points for the multi-core, which is an increase of roughly 8 and 11% respectively over stock settings. Next up we have Blender, and here the overclocked 1600 AF manages to finish the BMW scene in 5 minutes and 42 seconds, which is an 11% increase over stock, and using the classroom scene we're getting a similar uplift. Next we have this software that I'm not allowed to talk about if I don't want to get demonetized, and here the overclocked Ryzen 5 gets the scene rendered in 2 minutes and 38 seconds, which is an 11% increase over stock settings. Using V-Ray, the overclocked Ryzen 5 is getting 9,341 points, which is 12% better than stock. Moving on to gaming, let's begin with Apex Legends. And I'd like to apologize beforehand because I didn't have a lot of time to test the gaming performance, though I will definitely include more games as well as software in the 1600 AF versus FX8350 comparison. Either way, the game is more than playable, and I don't think I ever saw the frame rate dip below 100 frames per second. Giving my shields a recharge. Moving on we have Far Cry 5, which I also found to be very playable, with the frame rate ranging from 75 to 110 frames, depending on the situation. Next, we have PUBG, which also runs perfectly fine, and here I was getting well above 100 FPS most of the time.
Next, we have Battlefield 5, and with feature frame rendering enabled, the game runs well above 100 frames, basically at all times. You can disable it to slightly reduce the input lag, although be aware that doing so will decrease frames significantly. Finally, we have Shadow of the Tomb Raider, and using the built-in benchmark, we can confirm that the 1600 AF does deliver a very playable experience here as well. Looking at thermal performance using a budget aftermarket cooler, we can see that at stock the temps are great, so you won't have any issues in case you'd like to use the stock heatsink, though if you're going to be pushing the CP hard like I did, you're definitely going to need something beefier to keep the processor cool. Finally, we have power consumption, and by overclocking, we're increasing the power draw by 45% at idle, 62% using Intel Burn Test, and 21% while gaming compared to stock. Alright, so now that we've seen the performance, let's talk about the system specs. I used an MSI B350 Tomahawk motherboard, a cheap Snowman CPU cooler, 8GB of DDR4 2400MHz memory, a GTX 970 graphics card, and a 700W FSP Hydro power supply. Now, currently I don't have anything better than this, so I had to test the 1600 AF using these parts, and while it mostly performed well, I still decided to make a few changes to the parts list in the description. For example, instead of 8 gigs of RAM, I left 16, because that's the bare minimum you want to have nowadays, and I also left a few graphics card options for you to pick depending on your budget and preference. I included a few extras as well, such as CPU coolers, some case options, etc., so feel free to check it all out in the description. Obviously, it's all still going to be out of stock when this video goes live, though everything will slowly become available as this whole situation that I'm not allowed to talk about settles down. So there you have it. This is the kind of performance you're getting out of a CPU for less than $100. And to be honest, I don't think there is currently anything better that you can go for at that price. You're getting 6 cores and 12 threads with an unlocked multiplier, a great stock cooler that by the way can be used for a small overclock, and an amazing upgrade path that is only going to expand with the release of Ryzen 4000. Either way, that's going to be it for this one. Thank you guys for watching. Feel free to check out one of these videos over here. Be sure to leave a like, subscribe for more content, and I'll see y'all in the next one.